Welcome back. We're back with the uh, Toshiba 4010 CDT laptop that we covered in a previous video. There's one thing I had to uh, omit though from that video that I didn't have time to cover. And that's something that we barely saw mentioned a little bit quickly in the uh, sound control panel for the OPL SAX3 built in uh, Yamaha sound chip. It has a bit of an interesting feature that I haven't seen mentioned much. And that is MIDI on board. Let's, uh, let's take a look. Welcome back to Rick's Ren Retro, where we're going to learn about the little integrated sound card that could. So we're back again with the Toshiba laptop, and for the sake of this demonstration, I've just hooked up external speakers. I'm also capturing the audio to get a cleaner signal, so that's all that there is, and we'll also take a listen to the actual speakers on it here in a minute. However, uh, I noticed something interesting as I was tinkering with this machine for the last video, and like I mentioned, we just briefly saw it in the control panel. But if we go into the settings that uh, come with the Yamaha sound card on here, the Opel 3 SAX, like mentioned, it has a little section for MPU 401 out for DOS applications. That's very interesting because this laptop does not have MIDI out, and it's possible that there was some dongle or something that I missed, or maybe Toshiba just never deemed it needed. But MPU 4 out is normally used for external MIDI devices, right? Uh, the second option there is the one that's super interesting to us, which is SoftGM. So software-based general MIDI, because we actually have XG Lite and general MIDI icons up in the top left corner here, and that piqued my interest. So it was kind of tricky to get working. However, we now have a general MIDI on board that we can target directly. And I'll show you exactly how that works. So the one caveat with this is that this only works inside of DOS mode in Windows itself, and uh, we'll kind of show that uh, why a little later here. But if we go into, for example, the setup for Doom here, and we have our uh, standard style master setup, 220, um, and now we have, you know, your typical Sound Blaster Doom sound. It's your MIDI that you know and love, the kind of ad-lib sound. And uh, if we go into a new game here, uh, we'll hear the very classic Doom sound, the way we expect to hear it from a DOS level machine. Okay, so that's great, that's awesome, it's super nostalgic. However, if we, uh, if we leave this here, exit out there with that lovely sound effect, and we'll go back into setup now, and instead of doing that, we go to our sound card, or music, and we target general MIDI the same way you would an external one, on the MIDI port 330, which normally then might go to an external MIDI device. In our case, it goes to the other onboard card. So we select that, save parameters, and launch Doom. Now, we have Yamaha-based XG synthesizer. And if we go and start a new game, that sounds really cool. And it's all on board. This is not an external device providing this. This is all built into this Toshiba, which is awesome. Listen to that. That's just awesome. The fact that this is built into this machine and just works like this with no additional devices. And uh, again, I, I promise there is nothing else hooked up to this except the speakers here. I didn't want to have any other devices, but the fact that you can get this level of audio directly on the machine like this without any external devices, it's pretty amazing. So what's actually going on here? It's not like uh, the Toshiba engineers, when they designed this laptop, said like, we need to have MIDI capabilities and, you know, general MIDI and all that stuff. I think it's more a side effect of the sound chip they use with that Yamaha OPL3 SAX, whatever it was called. And it just so happens to have the XG components on there. Something similar you might see on something like this, the YMS724 Yamaha uh, sound card here that has the XG chipped on as well. The same thing with addressable general MIDI sound or FM synthesis. So in this case here, we basically just get it for free included with the Toshiba laptop where, again, obviously it was not designed with that in mind, but we just happen to have it included here because of the sound chip they used. I does say welcome surprise because they make this machine fantastic for the late 90s DOS era gaming and everything inside of Windows, as we'll notice here soon. It just works so well and it elevates this machine even further to uh, give it a lot more flexibility in what you can do with it. So what are some of the things you have to do to make this actually work on a supported chipset? Well, there are quite a few things and uh, the first off was getting the correct driver installed. 
which uh, took a little back and forth to find the one that actually worked. And I'll try and put a link in the description to the one I found that it worked for this particular card because there's so many variants of these Yamaha chipset sound cards on these. And uh, the next thing would be to basically make sure all the settings are correct in the BIOS because a lot of the plug and play settings are controlled by the BIOS. And it's also a setup SA utility that you run in DOS to configure all the settings. What it came down to was basically disabling every single thing that we could that was not relating to the sound card that's not being used to free up the resources to make all of this work correctly. Next was making sure that all the resources were assigned as expected. That includes making sure that uh, you know all the settings are as expected. Uh, it was a lot of back and forth. We actually took care of that during a live stream. I had to thank my viewers uh, during the stream that all helped me figure out how to get this running. Once all those pieces are in place, you basically have access to the sound card inside of DOS, as you'd expect. You have Sound Blaster compatibility inside of Windows, and again, that delicious general MIDI accessibility inside of Windows in DOS applications. So let's take a little bit of a lean back here and relax and take a listen to some of the comparisons between the standard Sound Blaster built in and then the Yamaha chipset sound effect that you get from the general MIDI.
So another thing I think that's really cool is that uh, by default, of course, when you do a MIDI playback or whatever, you're gonna use your built-in MIDI capabilities on your sound card, in this case here, just your general MIDI synthesizer that's on the Yamaha sound card. So for example, if we go ahead and play Passport, it's gonna sound like you're blaring kind of typical MIDI output from a sound card in this era. Turn down just a little bit because that's almost a little too blaring, but it's just your standard output, the kind of what you expect. It's fine, it's cool. But if we go into the control panel, look at the multimedia option, there's a MIDI tab available here. And if we notice here, you can actually select which MIDI out you're using. In our case, if we select this soft wave table MIDI out or out, as it's shortened for, and then go and play it now. We're now retargeting the MIDI to use that Yamaha XG chip instead. And it sounds completely different. So you can use this for pretty much any MIDI stuff inside of Windows itself, which I think is really cool. MIDI, it really whips the llama's ass. I said a bad word. Anyway, it's, it's a really cool option and it makes it fun to explore. Uh, and the fact that it's available right is not just in games, but also in applications and anything that uses MIDI. We can change the reverb and everything too. If we go into the control panel and look at the options here, we can turn off reverb and we can turn on the quality if we want to. And it sounds very flat now by comparison. We can go to excellent, go to on. I think it's nice to have a little bit of those options on. We can reduce or increase our Y immersion and our ba bass and treble and everything, but it sounds really good. For example, here's Canon out mid using that same uh, Yamaha component. Sounds awesome. And it makes uh, the usability of this even better. There's even more options that you can do and use. Again, all built into this awesome little laptop. Now, while the laptop is, uh, again, an all-in-one unit that gives you everything you need on the go, the speakers uh, that are integrated are yeah, they're, they're not anything you want to like actually rely on. Uh, I'll put the microphone up here and you can really uh, really see what I mean. The sound is extremely tinny because they're really small, so. So yeah, while it is neat to have the speakers available and everything, I uh, wouldn't, you know, use them for really anything of any significance. They're pretty, pretty terrible, but it's still cool that, you know, that everything is included with the machine. You have all of it available on the go. So with all that said, our uh, Toshiba satellite here is a fantastic option for playing games that take advantage of that MIDI capability that you might see in those late 90s games. Having that built in and on the go with no wires, no external device or anything is really cool. I don't know how many of these uh, satellites actually have the same chip, and there may be more models that can utilize this as well, because I haven't seen much about it. But it's a fascinating topic, because I'm a sucker for that late uh, 90s MIDI sound, of course, like I think many of us are. And having it just available on the machine like this, plus all the DOS compatibility when Windows 9 to 598 gaming, it's, uh, it's a really compelling option, and elevates this laptop from cool to freaking awesome. And I've used a lot of superlatives in this video, probably, but it is just it it just ties all of it together so well so while we looked at the general use for this computer in the first video on this i wanted to really just highlight the midi capabilities because i just haven't seen much about it so i hope you enjoyed exploring that uh, with me as well and i'm going to continue enjoying this laptop i think for a long time so as always thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time if you enjoyed this video feel free to check out some of my other ones i cover a wide range of retro topics uh, but mostly focusing on retro computers you can find me on social media, on my website, or you can also catch me live at 8.45pm Central on Thursdays.